Um, hi, I'm Sonia Visser. I'm the head of sales here at Hypothesis. I have been with Hypothesis for four years and prior to that worked for a publisher and have been in um, educational sales for quite some time. And more importantly, I am getting ready to drop my daughter off to college for the first time this Friday. She's going to James Madison University. So if there's any JMU faculty on here, um, I'll be uh, at campus on Friday and can stop in and, and bring you some coffee. <laughs> but uh, so um, this is uh, just a, a great week for me, and I'm so happy to be here hosting our, um, our webinar today. We're really going to be talking about um, hypothesis, social annotation, um, and how to use social annotation and incorporate that into your um, courses. So today we're going to be focusing on what is hypothesis, why would you use social annotation in your curriculum, um, guiding student annotations, thinking about how social annotation can really reach all students, um, and then thinking about, um, you know, artificial intelligence, AI, we've got chat GPT um, and other tools out there. How can we use um, that AI literacy within social annotation and ways to think about um, making sure that that isn't coming in uh, if, if that's it, coming into your, your annotations, if that's what you're thinking about too. And then our last item is just um, how to get started with hypothesis. So what does it look like to annotate in Hypothesis? Um, I think that most of you may have seen Hypothesis, but you may not have. So I'm going to just uh, start there. I'm actually going to jump into uh, my Hypothesis course, and I'm going to show you an example of what Hypothesis looks like. We integrate um, as an external tool in all of the major learning management systems. So what you're seeing here is a reading and Hypothesis as the uh, sidebar that appears right um, there within that LMS with the, um, on top of this reading. This looks the same in any LMS. The differences really are how you would create an assignment um, and how it integrates with the gradebook, just some of those details. But, but really, um, the functionality of Hypothesis works the same in all of our learning management systems. Um, so you'll see here on this document, we've got some highlights already. We have um, some annotations in our annotation cards over here. And as I um, scroll through through the annotation card, you'll see that, that that color changes on the document. This is the content that is anchored to that annotation. Um, and what you'll really notice is just the way that um, you can ask specific questions. As a faculty member, you can um, really ask questions to find out and have that visibility into what your students may or may not know. Students can have the opportunity to come in and um, ask questions of you, ask questions of other students. It's just providing that real collaboration, but it's anchoring to this content um, that you are providing in your assignments in this course. So just a couple of examples here. We've got this instructor who has asked the students to complete a survey. So one of the other features within Hypothesis is the ability to use different modalities. So if I look at this replies, this threaded conversations that we have um, within the annotations here, you will see that um, the students have posted the links to their surveys. So again, it's, it's being able to bring in other content to help support um, what you're learning or to be able to define um, something in the reading or just to have some, some fun with, with the reading and, and your course materials. Um, another example we've got is what's the most authentic pizza commercial you can find? So if I click on those replies, you can see Again, bringing in some different modalities, the videos can play right here within the annotation card and um, all of the content, everything they're learning and working on uh, within that course is staying anchored to this reading um, here within Hypothesis. You can see that um, sometimes people will say or ask a question of, oh, well, how is this different than a discussion board or um, perhaps a Google Doc? As you can see, 
it is anchoring and as a, and you're really um, annotating in the margins of that content, you are able to bring in different modalities that you're not doing um, with say a Google doc. And you're also staying in one place. Um, you, we find that um, a lot of times when students use those discussion boards, they're moving away from the content that they're reading. And at that point, that just, you know, they can get distracted. They're, they're having to toggle back to see what is it that they were reading and what did they want to reply to or answer. So this really keeps everything um, right in, in one spot that everyone can at, uh, students can at any time come back as they're preparing for an exam, working on a research paper, and all of their, their content is right here. I'm going to jump back into our presentation. So that's really just to give a high level view of what hypothesis looks like within um, the learning management system and um, with the readings that you're assigning. So hypothesis makes these readings annotatable, as I mentioned. And with that, you have a single sign-on. Um, students will come into your learning management system. They will go into your course just as they normally do, and they will click on that assignment. And when you have enabled hypothesis on a reading, it will look just like it did um, when I showed you that example. We work with all the different learning management systems, and um, we also integrate with the grade books. So um, again, just a, a really nice way to, to be able to have have students um, collaborate and work together and again provide some insight for you as to what they're doing, how they're reading, um, and um, you know, just, just to be able to see if they are reading. Because that is one of the things that we've heard from faculty is why use social annotation? A couple of, of, of real uh, quick answers I get all the time in talking to faculty about what, what do they see as a benefit from using hypothesis and social annotation. It's thinking about where where are they struggling and, and what are they trying to find out? A lot of faculty want to know, are students actually just reading the documents? Are they reading what I'm asking them to read? Um, are they engaging with that content? Um, how do I know if they understand something or they don't understand something? And that's really where social annotation can make a difference in your course. Um, a few things here, you know, when you think about so social annotation um, and, and you know, why would you want to use this, I'm going to go through, I've got some case studies and some research, but to really start off with these three points, it encourages this metacognition. So, you know, metacognition is, is understanding our own thinking about our thinking, um, and, and hypothesis really does help with that skill. Um, a lot of times students will come into college where um, they don't really know how to think um, or really think critically, I should say, about the content they're reading. How does it uh, really apply to what they're learning? Um, and, and thinking about hypothesis in this way, it increases the retention of of their uh, the content and the comprehension of that content because they're engaging and they're asking questions and they're learning how to ask the right questions to really think about what they're learning, how it relates to other uh, elements in the course that they're in right now, or how it relates to other courses that they're taking and how it relates to experiences they've had in their own life. Um, and to be able to pull of all that together. So sometimes, you know, you're, we're, we're having students do all this and they're not, it, it's, it's they're learning it um, and not even knowing that this is this is something, a skill that they're actually practicing and, and learning. Um, hypothesis will uh, help and, and social annotation will help prolong the reading engagement. Um, so again, this goes back to that question, how do I know if my students are reading? Um, you know, this is, is one piece of when they're in there and they're reading a document and you know they're asking questions and they're replying, um, you know, they're engaged with that, that document and that content. Um, and lastly here, it, it does help uh, to really identify where students are confused because they can ask that question right there on the content um, and other students can reply and you can also reply um, directly to, to those questions as well. 
So we've done a case study um, with the University of Texas at Austin, and this really goes back to, to the point I mentioned of, you know, the prolonged reading and, and that they're um, actually engaging with this content. So um, with this case study, it was uh, two courses. One was using hypothesis with their coursework and one was not. So if you look um, here at, um, at, at the, the different course times and the median days of how often that that they were engaging with the content when they were not using hypothesis it was seven median days that they were engaging with that content and when they were using hypothesis they were engaged 36 times we found 36 medium days i'm sorry we found that um really there's a we have a chart so if, uh, go to the case studies on our website um you can really read this case study and it, it goes into uh, other details but what we do find is is in a lot of cases you you know the question of are they reading students will come in they will read the content they need to answer that question that you had that exam or uh, prepare for a research paper and just to answer what they need at that moment. Um, what we find with hypothesis is because of that um, engagement and the ability to anchor to the content and ask those questions as they're reading on the fly, right at the moment where they have that question and not having to go somewhere else, um, the students were engaged throughout the entire course, as you can see with, with the different days here. So um, just to think about using annotation and social annotation with in um, a course for, for that prolonged reading and engagement. Um, looking at this, uh, again, kind of talking about the anchoring of the class discussion, but also providing space for student voices. So um, when, when you've got uh, a class of students and, and you're there and you're asking, um, you know, the question, you know, do you have any questions or uh, did you have any questions about the reading and, and there's, um, there's really crickets and you're, you're not getting any questions or it could be that you have the same students that are consistently answering those questions. Um, um, hypothesis allows you to um, draw out um, different voices. So for an example, you can have students that are reading the content and, and you'll say to them, please read chapter one. Um, the assignment is in my LMS. I want you to annotate. I want you to ask questions that you have about that assignment, um, you know, whatever that prompt or instruction might be. And then in your next uh, lecture, you can go into hypothesis, look at those questions, and you can call out a student, you know, uh, Sam, you know, you uh, annotated and you asked this question or you made this point. Can you elaborate on that? So it does allow for uh, students who perhaps need more time, need to be more thoughtful to be able to put their words, uh, you know, in that margin for you to be able to see. But then you're able to bring them into these different uh, discussions and, and really create a more robust discussion with the students within, in your class. So again, just pro providing that space for, for those different voices. Um, this is a, an, an older research it's it, that we have, um, but it is uh, really remarkable because we find that students actually enjoy using hypothesis. Um, you can see here that um, over 70% of the students here in this, this uh, case study said that it helped them learn, it made them feel connected, um, it helps them work through ideas together, and um, with all of this, it just is providing a space for them to um, really sort of grow as a learner, as a scholar, and it builds that confidence that will help them be successful, not only just in the courses that they're taking, but also then, you know, taking this, this ability to, to annotate and think critically outside of the classroom as well. So guiding student annotation. So um, just sort of thinking about hypothesis and having been here for, for a while and talking to, to different faculty members, you know, one of the things, uh, you know, a lot of times people focus on just technically how to use hypothesis, which it's very easy to use. And faculty and students really, um, you know, seem to, to be able to do that and, and learn that very quickly. But sometimes where students may struggle a little bit more is how how they engage 
uh, with the content and how they engage meaningfully with the content. So kind of thinking about, you know, um, you know, maybe one of the discussion board you might have, because I've heard this of faculty, they'll say, oh, the discussion board where, you know, you put down, uh, um, you know, the, the prompt and then it's, uh, or someone will reply and, and another student say, I agree, I agree, I agree. So um, how can you help students to think about um, annotating and, and engaging with the content in a meaningful way? So that's what I want to go over here um, in this next section is just some ideas, some ways to be thinking about using this in your, in your classwork. Um, um, throughout this uh, this rest of this presentation, I'm going to have some links in here, um, and so we um, I know that this was put in chat at the very beginning this presentation, but you'll be able to click into these links and you'll be able to have these examples for for to for you to be able to use uh, within the course this fall. So let's get started. Um, so the first thing I always like to ask and, and talk to with faculty is. What's your purpose? Why would you want to use um, social annotation? And and I'll get uh, many different responses. And and in this group we have today, um, every one of you could have a different purpose and a different reason for why you want to use social annotation. And I think that's where we always want to start: is why are you doing this? And then letting the students know what your purpose is. So it could be that you want to hold your students accountable. It could be that you want to create a space. Um, where there's more discussions or create a discussion space. Um, it also could be that you want to build a community. We hear that uh, you know you can use hypothesis in a hybrid or online or face to face. And in, in a lot of cases, some of the online faculty that that only teach online speak of really trying to build that community when you're not there face to face. So I'm um, really thinking about what's the purpose and why am I using social annotation. And so these are some things that you might want to consider. So your assignment frequency, um, you know, it, it could be uh, that you will have a reading every week and you want your students to be able to engage with that. Um, I have an example. I know I have a biology uh, faculty member who actually has students annotate um, their study guides just before their exams. So it, it could be that uh, as, as infrequent as that, it could be two or three times a semester. Um, so it really does, is something to consider of what, what, how many times do you want to have an assignment that's enabled with hypothesis? Um, also, the types and lengths of reading. It could be that you are looking at um, really large, more um, in-depth research papers uh, that, that you want your students to be engaging with, or it could be, um, you know, short short poems or short stories uh, that, that you might want to think about and, and how your students will engage with those. Um, the other piece is uh, class size and modality. So if you've got, uh, you know, a, a class size with, you say, 100 students, you may want them to annotate together just once or twice. We also work with the groupings section and all the learning management sets, uh, all the learning management systems. So a class size of 100, you could actually have them break up into groups of, you know, fives or tens or, or make it a much smaller, smaller group that are annotating together. Again, just some things to think about as you're thinking about um, social annotation and the types of questions and prompts, and, and we'll get into those, some of that too. And then the modality, um, because as you saw in my example, you can pull in websites, you can pull in memes and, and videos, so it can be really, um, really quite, quite creative. Um, throughout this whole uh, presentation, you'll see we get the little pencil icon here, and when I click on that pencil icon, it will take us to a section of our website with some resources. So this one, so for example, is annotating your syllabus and instructions for that. So I just want to point out that um, when you are, are going through this uh, presentation, make sure you're clicking on those, those pencil icons to get some examples. So I'm going to stay with that sample syllabus annotation because this does talk about sort of what's the purpose. So this is an example from um, a professor who uh, does do a sample annotation, uh, a syllabus, I'm sorry, a syllabus annotation. And um, this is one thing we, we always suggest is have your students annotate the syllabus. So um, again, we've got the, the purpose here is um, they're, they're really looking at 
um, having the students come in, annotate the syllabus to find out exactly where the students, um, uh, what the students are excited about learning, where they think uh, they may need a little extra help. So again, providing that visibility. Um, and then knowing that it's a syllabus, um, you know, sometimes students will come in on syllabus day and think, oh, that's great. I can sit back. I don't have to do anything. Well, this instructor really wants them to be a little bit more engaged and really uh, get a sense of what this semester is going to look like. So, um, the reiteration of low stakes that this these annotations are pass fail. You know the process of learning is to make mistakes and to be wrong. So accepting that you can do that um, as you're annotating here, and that um, these annotations will serve as notes, as a uh, the ability to come back and look at them. Um, that we're building a community, we're contributing to this combined knowledge, and that you can come back and it'll help. Um, you know look at what you've done and 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 move forward at, at a later time. So so you can see there is a real purpose as to why um, why the students would be doing this and sort of be able being able to reiterate that through all of the assignments as to why we're doing that. You know, I just think about anything in our life, you know, why why am I doing this? And um, I think that really helps students to to say, you know what, that's I, I can get on board. I, I want to do those things. So um, to have that purpose, want to just just kind of focus on that. So um, again, uh, starting about the, thinking about the annotating of the syllabus, we went over this a little bit, but it's setting those expectations, providing that space for questions. Um, and again, when you're thinking about the syllabus, as I mentioned, it is low stakes. It doesn't have to be, you know, something that's so intense that that you're you're going to have, um, you know, have to go out and, and do any research on that. It's it's just a, a really great place to start. It's also a good place to even start building that community as students who haven't, um, you know, been in this class before who haven't don't know each other they can get to know each other a little bit on the syllabus depending on you know if there's a space in there where you will ask you know where are you from or you know what other what's your major what other courses are you interested in and, and students can kind of get get to know each other a little bit in that margin space as well um, guiding students through these texts. So there's a couple of different ways that you, you can do this. Um, model annotations. So you saw in, in the, um, the example that I showed in my Canvas course, where you've got the instructor that's asking pretty pointed questions. So you can start that and, and really kind of guide and model those annotations. Because again, um, depending on the class you're teaching, it, it could be that students may not have really annotated or, or have written in the margins even previously. So showing them how this can be helpful, getting them to think about the types of questions that they're going to be thinking of when they're when they're reading the content, and then being able to provide that clarification within, um, you know, with, within those annotations and within that content. That's all, you know, really key to helping them um, to helping them grow as a student. Another um, a way to be thinking about uh, guiding your students with annotation is just having that open, you know, space for them to ask questions and um, to provide resources and to connect. Um, you know, they can come in and really have all access to be able to ask any question that they have about the content. And depending on the content, you know, whether it's a, like I said, a deep research paper, they could really provide some some questions that maybe you didn't even think that students might have. Maybe there's a there's a piece of that that content that oh I oh I think everybody knows about this, and maybe the students don't. So again, it's really um, encouraging them to be able to think about things. Um, how do you ask these questions, and then to be able to reply to one another. And we'll get into that a little bit later of how to help students, you know, how to help guide them reply to another student or to your because that's also um, something that needs to be learned is, you know, not just agreeing, but how to ask, ask a question or answer a question that really encourages that conversation. Um, and then ask the students to practice key skills related to problem solving. So, you know, uh, this one I'm going to click here. Um, because a lot of times this is within STEM, where you will need to clarify, um, you know, perhaps a 
uh, it could be a formula or or you know a, a piece of content that that uh, is a little bit more challenging or that uh, more they need more clarification on. Um, I'm going to click into my next slide here, and this will give you a good example. So again, we're looking at uh, this clarification of syntax. You know, what is the difference between this or translating these technical passages um, so students can can uh, really help each other with this with this content. And then you as the instructor can come in and and also provide insight. So it's uh, uh, thinking about the courses that you're in and the types of, of content you're having students read, uh, it can really provide a great space for them to be able to ask these questions. And, and again, in, in a space where if you're asking them what questions do you have in a classroom of 50 students, a lot of students won't feel comfortable just to raise their hand and do that. Here within the margins of the content, uh, there's, there's a lot more comfortability to be able to ask that question. And again, thinking about what's the purpose? Why am I using this? I want the students to be able to feel comfortable to ask and, um, and really work with each other. Um, and then the last piece here is just to kind of think about some of the uh, content that you want your students to uh, really be able to to annotate. So, um, as I mentioned, we I have a biology professor who has the students annotate study guides. It could be instructions. It could be your lecture notes that you have your students annotate. Um, we also um, now uh, we we work with uh, YouTube videos. So so annotating videos. So it could be you have. Um, um, you, you've uh, actually got your your lecture on film and, and 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 in YouTube, and the students could actually annotate annotate that content. So again, sort of thinking about uh, just different types of content. It doesn't have to just be um, a URL or a PDF or a textbook. You know, it, it can be other types of content as well as the different types of documents that you want your students to use. So social annotation to reach students. Um, this is really where I, I kind of want to talk about how we, again, bringing in different voices, um, building that community of, of, of scholars within your, your coursework. Um, so just kind of thinking, how can we, how does uh, social annotation help to do that within your courses? Um, so again, Thinking about that peer-to-peer -peer learning, building that community, um, we hear I hear so many times the feedback from faculty that you're just you know there, there could be introverts in your classroom that that just don't speak up at all or or you don't hear them because they're not comfortable doing so. Um, we also thinking about. Um, using this again for confidence issues. I mean, this uh, research um, really compared um, looking at um, anchor discussions and with hypothesis and how it, it, it increased um, confidence with uh, students. So really just that that ability to to be part of that conversation that that they don't have if it's just a face to face or if they're just reading alone where they may not want to be asking those questions because, oh, you know, I don't want to be the only one that doesn't understand this or I don't want to be the only one that has this question. Um, this, um, we, we had a uh, case study with an undergraduate pharmacy course, and um, what we found here is that hypothesis really does increase the um, comprehension, and we saw that students became more persistent, especially in some of these courses that are uh, the gateway courses. So this could be an introductory course um, to pharmacy, for example, or, or it's most in, in other STEM fields where this is the course they take. And if they do well, they're going to continue on in the major. So, um, you know, how do you build students' confidence and how do you help them continue on in these courses? And when you are able to have uh, students that um, are, are able to, to 
think more critically, really increase that metacognition skill um, and, and be able to engage with more difficult content, that increases the confidence that, you know what, I, I'm good at this and I can continue on in these courses. And so, um, again, we've got case studies, many different case studies on our website. Um, I encourage you to check those out. We have them in a lot of different discipline areas. And, and really, it shows um, with this one here that that comprehension um, has increased when you're using this, uh, when you're using social annotation. So I wanted to go back and just kind of touch on, you know, we we mentioned about, you know, different ways to get your students engaged and and coming in and asking questions and and answering your uh, annotations if if you've modeled that. But um, sometimes students may not know how to actually respond to each other and really create that um, that that threaded discussion. And so um, this is called uh, the tag uh, feedback protocol, and um, it really helps students engage in meaningful discussions. Um, so thinking about when responding to classmates or, or even to yourself, um, you know, having them tell some things that they like, you know, wow, you know, your your comment was really inspiring or this, it made me think of this. Um, so sort of that telling of something. And then the A is the asking of these questions, you know, um, what did that mean? A, you know, clarification or did you consider or the whys? So those are also uh, just great ways to prompt um, responses. And then finally, the, the give, the G of giving suggestions. Um, you might consider or do you think you should or, you know, I think I should. So, so those types of, of ways to really engage with each, with each other. And this really does go beyond the classroom because as you think about moving on past, um, you know, past the, the school or, or, you know, going into a job, these are also ways that you would engage in a discussion with your colleagues. Um, so you're, you're laying the groundwork of how to communicate um, with the, you know, having, being anchored to the discussions and, and, the, and the content you have in your class, but really teaching life skills for them to be able to continue after, after that uh, content and after that coursework. Um, one other piece I'll, to point out is, you know, hypothesis with the use of that multimedia and um, really is incorporating the ideas of universal design uh, for learning. And I'm going to quickly show you here. Let me move. So this is an example, um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit later about the types of content you can use in Hypothesis. This is a JSTOR article, but you can see here that, that we've got a lot of different um, responses here and, and interactions, but it just shows the different modalities you can use. Um, here we've got, uh, you know, a couple of different memes. We've got, you know, different images here. Um, and then more importantly, we've got those videos. So the students aren't just coming in and reading and typing a, a text. They can now use different ways to communicate um, as students have different ways of learning. So you're really, um, I thought this is incorporating, you know, all those different, uh, those different types of modalities into uh, the process for students as they're reading and engaging with the content in each other. Um, we also have uh, within, so thinking about that universal design, the UDL, um, you can clarify that vocabulary or, or, or concepts that are anchored within that text. Um, and it gives uh, really that guide to, to highlight those concepts um, and patterns throughout, throughout the content that they're reading and um, provides that insight for you. So, you know, it's, it's thinking about different ways you can encourage your students to to reply in and and to uh engage um you know whether it's again sort of thinking about the goals and the purpose of clarifying or offering alternatives to that text or um, alternatives to any sort of that visual information so um, another great uh great reason to incorporate you know uh hypothesis and and social annotation in your in your curriculum 
Um, we also, on uh, as I mentioned before, we uh, integrate with the YouTube vi videos. So the 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 video plays, the the transcript runs. You're you're annotating that transcript. Um, and I mentioned some of those the wonderful uh, ways that we see faculty using that today. Um, whether it's just with um, you know YouTube assignments or whether they're actually recording their their actual lectures to to have students um, come in and annotate. But again, different idea of how you know a lot of students may be needing to read and listening to Audible. So again, providing some different tools um, for students to be able to be successful in, in your course. Um, so thinking about types of prompts and questions that you can ask to encourage this multimedia. So, you know, it could be just adding the images, um, embedding those videos, but also thinking about how is that, so it's not just, again, the, the purpose, it's not just, let's just add a video, but what are you trying to connect that to? So are, are you, you know, is it, is, can you connect that to other portions of the content you're learning, other, other things that um, you're learning in different courses? So um, again, definitely go back and and look at our the the icon the pencil icons i have for different types of prompts of an, and of and questions for assignments because that can really help you um get your students to be able to use these modalities but uh in a way that again thinking about that meaningfulness of um, how students are responding and collaborating with each other Um, and again, you can get creative. I mean, that's that's what makes this also fun. I mean, you know, we we I showed you the slide with the research that said if students really enjoy using hypothesis, they think it's fun, and it it can be so fun. I mean, with emojis or you know, um, or even these different images, like you can get really creative, and students can have a lot of fun with that. Um, and you know, when when it's not just in a lot of cases, you know, I don't like to use the word trick because that's not really what, what you do, but, you know, our students reading and you can get them to read and really enjoy it. And they're really learning along the way. And sometimes they don't even realize they're doing it because it's just become so much fun. So, um, so that's another uh, great aspect of, of being able to use these different multimedia, you know, annotations is, is just, uh, just the fun aspect of it and, and getting them really um, excited about what they're learning. Uh, but, but in a way that, 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 that kind of reaches them, um, you know, as they're, as they're so used to using social media or, uh, you know, different types of technology that they can use that right there within, within your LMS on your reading and in, in hypothesis. So quickly, I'm going to touch a little bit on social annotation and um, AI literacy. Um, so, you know, it's it's one of those things you either, you know, you you want to incorporate it or you want to make sure that it's it's not there. And, you know, we've got I got a couple of examples of, of how you can do do both, really, um, or either. Um, so. One of the things you can do if you you can actually incorporate this, you can have your students go out and they can generate text um, using an AI tool, and then you can have them it go in and kind of critique those annotations. You can go in and have them really fact check. So it's it's a way of getting them to be thinking about. I can't just take whatever from you know whether with whatever tool, Chat GPT, for example, and it be the truth. Let's let's really think about that. Let's think about the content and 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 it, it allows the students to use it, but know that it's not always correct, and you need to be thinking about how you can uh, fact check that. So that's um, one example that we've seen faculty use. Um, you know, again, that couple other examples. So fat having students be the fact checkers, um, students as those editors. So they're critiquing it, they're looking at that, um, and then helping them to become content experts. So and analyzing that accuracy, um, you know, for, for different perspectives and things. So these are, are ways that you can really think about incorporating it and, and again, making it perhaps a little bit more, more fun while you're incorporating that into your into the, the reading that you're doing in, in that assignment. Um, I will also say 
yeah, I'll go back and thinking about ways that you, the, the prompts that you use. So I'm just going to click back in this, uh, the STEM one here, but the prompts that you use can also really hinder the use of chat GPT, because if you're asking students some very specific questions and prompts where they're having to rely on the content that they've learned in previous assignments in that specific, in the specific course you're in, or they have to answer and draw on content they've used in their own life or life experiences or other courses they're in, it's, a, it's, it's much more difficult for them to then go and chat GPT because they're drawing on experiences that only they can and can relate to and only um, only they can um they can draw on so so again thinking about the types of questions you ask uh really can get your students um you know in, engaged in in drawing on their own experiences and not having to rely on something um such as chat D gpt for example So getting started um, with hypothesis and social annotation. So these are some of the um, some of the details with um, how you know how you use hypothesis. What types of contents can you annotate? Um, so we've got within hypothesis, as I, I showed you that example was in uh, Canvas. It, we use we can work with any of the LMSs, um, and with that, you can enable content on PDFs, web pages, and online articles. Any sort of open textbook, any sort of OER content. Um, one of the examples I showed you was a JSTOR article. So we do partner with JSTOR. We partner with Vital Source, so you can bring in those articles in eText. And then we also um, you can enable YouTube uh, video transcripts as well. So all of that type of content you can use with Hypothesis. And what can you put in those? We've we've covered a, a lot of these things today. Um, and you know whether it's just straight text and and that uh, just having that conversation, images, videos, equations. Um, we work with the LaTeX language. So if you are using um, in a in a math discipline or a STEM discipline where you are using equations, then you can use hypothesis. I always say if you've got content that you want your students to engage with. Um, in any discipline, then you can you can use hypothesis and social annotation to uh, to engage with your students. Um, again, tags and emojis. So I didn't really talk about tags, um, but within the annotation card, you can tag uh, those annotations with words that allow you to then filter. So kind of thinking about when I was talking about anchoring discussions in the classroom, that's one way that you can really help to filter those annotations if you have your students tag them with certain words. You know, an example is if, if you're looking at um, a poem and you, you're thinking about theme and you want your students to tag, you know, the, the content with theme, then uh, then you can uh, have a discussion on theme in the next in the next uh, lecture. So um, and again, we have links here to help you think about um, when and, and how you'd want to be adding those links, images and, and videos. So definitely take advantage of, of the links we have. Um, one quick uh, note here, uh, just a little housekeeping note, our PDFs do need to be selectable text. Um, so um, that's because, uh, you know, you, you, in order to annotate, you're hovering in, over those words. So um, you just want to make sure that you can select, copy, um, and paste those those texts. And I think we're, we've, uh, you might have some instructions coming in chat just to, to make sure how that, that works. But I just, just wanted to point that out, that it do, PDFs do need to be that selectable text. Um, so here's just some links on, uh, again, we work with all the major learning management systems, and um, we've got uh, instructions here for how to get started in Canvas and Blackboard, Blackboard and D2L, Moodle, um, really very self-explanatory um, and, and easy to, to use technically. Um, most uh, the workshops and the trainings that we do are mostly pedagogically and really dive in much more in depth. I'm, I'm hitting the highlights, but we will have um, workshops that really dive into just these several specific aspects of how to use social annotation in, in your course and in your discipline area. 
Um, we have our starter assignments. I think this is the, the resources that we have in Hypothesis, I think, are, are um, some of the best in, in the industry. We work with over 400 institutions, and there are faculty that are doing some really amazing work and um, really just getting the most out of their students and are, are so creative. So um, these are some examples of just starter assignments, um, whether it's within STEM, whether it's with um, you know, just general starter assignments. Um, again, I'll click on this one to show you, but uh, this goes back to my point of really how you are prompting your students or, or getting your students engaged in the reading, um, you know, can, can really make that difference. So we've got starter assignments, just some general ones or sta scaffolding a textbook assignment. Um, we have different assignments that you can think about at the beginning of the semester. As again, I mentioned that annotation, uh, the, the syllabus annotation assignment, a uh, getting to know you roster assignment, really if you're trying to build that community, um, using groups, um, you know, how to do that. And then even thinking about the middle or end of semester, we have faculty that will, you know, the, the first month or so they'll say, oh, I, you know, I, you know, I'm going to do the same thing I've always done. And then they're realizing their students just are not reading and, and they're not engaging and they will come to us and, and ask, you know, okay, I'm, I, what can I do? It's the middle of semester. I, I really want to engage my, my students. And so, you know, we've got just some examples here, but, you know, before the midterm, you know, study guide annotations, lecture note annotation uh, assignments. So, um, you know, and, and, you know, all across the board. So, so I definitely say take advantage uh, of, of this content to, to really help you start thinking about how you can really get the most out of your students at whatever point in the semester you are and whatever type of content you're having them, um, you, you know, read and, and engage with because we, we've got a lot of different ideas um, that, that we share with people. So we, um, it, I know, I'm not sure how many of you have already are subscribing to Hypothesis, but um, we have a partnership program that, we, you know, when you become a subscriber and you have a license with Hypothesis, um, we provide a lot of different um, support and and just really partner with you to to make sure that you and your students are are um, getting the most out of Hypothesis and and you know, social annotation. So um, first, we have a pedagogical support. We of uh, a success team that works with you um, uh, on webinars, customized webinars. We have partner workshops um, and also just some some one on one instructional design. So this is where you really can think about, uh, you know, what's what's the purpose? Why am I doing this? How am I going to use this? Um, and so you can really get the most out of your students. Um, other resources here. So um, I oops, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, everybody. Got a little quick there. Um, I, you know, I, I mentioned some of the resources, whether it's the starter assignments or educator resources. One of the areas um, that's on our websites are liquid margins. It's a, it's almost like a like a podcast, but it is um, just a wealth of information. So, uh, liquid margins, we. Um, actually interview and talk with faculty that are using hypothesis um, and have used hypothesis and how they're using it. It, it really dives into um, what were their goals, what was the purpose, and um, you know what they found. How did they get their students engaged? What did the students think? What types of assignments did you use? What were those prompts? And we look at all different types of discipline areas. So if you are a, a math uh, professor and you're on this call, you can go in. We have examples of how other math faculty are using us. We have examples of, um, you know, just other STEM or whether it's uh, college success or, you know, first year students. Um, you know, we that's a, an area where you we'll see probably students that have never annotated before. So how do you ease into that? What are some ways you can get them, you know, really interested in the syllabus and then modeling annotation and then getting them the confidence to do it on their own? And how do you go about that? So Liquid Margins is a wonderful spot to get um, all sorts of um, information from the faculty that are using it and have used it. Um, and it, it can become just, it's, I watch some of those and it becomes a real inspiration just to see how, how they're incorporating it. 
Um, the um, next thing we offer is Hypothesis Academy. So this is a two-week asynchronous course that is uh, designed to really help you dive in and really um, you know, get the most out of using Hypothesis. So we have a Social Annotation 101, which is our intro that just um, allows you to just get hands-on experience, you know, practice using Hypothesis, thinking about different prompts, different examples, all of that. And then we have a social annotation in the age of AI. And as I mentioned in my AI section, it's a lot of different ways to think about how can I incorporate this? What types of prompts and examples can I do to help students really um, understand how to use chat GPT? But then also, you know, how do I create prompts where I may not want to have them incorporate that? So um, that's a real hands-on learning aspect. And then we have, um, we have another one that's going to be coming out soon. So stay tuned for our, our third Hypothesis Academy. Um, and um, there's links in chat uh, to be able to, to register for those. Um, we have, um, as I mentioned, fall partner workshops. So once you have a subscription with us, you can join um, these fall partner workshops and, th and they go in a little bit more in depth to some of the things that I've talked about. So um, one is our quick start workshop. So that's the intro to how to use it in your specific LMS. Then we have a new feature. So if you have been a faculty member that's used a while, we've got some new features that, that have come out since you've used. Um, we really highlight those new features in that specific LMS. Uh, we have an annotate your syllabus um, workshop that just highlights and just focuses on that type of an assignment uh, using small groups in the LMS. As I mentioned, we work with that grouping aspect in all the LMSs. So, you know, how you, um, you know, the, the prompts and how you provide instructions for a class of 100 can be very different than how you do that for uh, groups where you want students to pair together and have them in, in groups of two or four, et cetera. So um, just some different strategies for that. Um, and then we've got starter assignments and um, just some different different other types, whether it's um, just regular social annotation strategies or, um, you know, thinking about retention and success as you're heading towards the end of that semester. We have two webinars coming up. So um, as I mentioned, we've got our liquid margins, which is going to be coming up. And that's going to be looking at how hypothesis has helped increase grades and engagement and student outcomes. And that's with um, faculty at University of Alaska. And then we have another webinar. Uh, that's our, our next one, which is on September 5th. I'm sorry, I keep touching that button, um, on September 5th, and that is with faculty at Missouri State Southern University, and they're really talking about how Hypothesis has transformed uh, reading uh, and, and social and, and annotation has really transformed their the engagement they see with the, the reading assignments that they're doing. So I would uh, suggest uh, definitely coming to listen to both of those. Um, it's it's so it's always so great, as I mentioned, to, to be able to hear from faculty members and what they're doing in their classrooms. And so uh, encourage you to be able to join either or both of those. And then the uh, last thing I'm going to talk about is some of you may not be part of our partnership program yet, and we want to make sure that you do become part of our partnership program. So we have a Kickstart promo promotion, um, which has, if, if you're not already subscribed, we have discounted pricing. It allows you to start Hypothesis immediately. Um, you obviously will then get access to all of those partnership uh, workshops and academies that I mentioned earlier. Um, we have that LMS integration which allows for single sign-on, um, easy um, assignment creation, gradebook integration, um, different content, uh, access to be able to use different content. Um, and then uh, we also have, again, the, like I said, those workshops for faculty and admins. So um, this website, uh, education, uh, sorry, this email address, education at hypothesis, um, if you're interested, please uh, reach out and uh, email us. Um, we It is not too late. Uh, we, you can get started now, even if your semester has started. It is, it is so easy. 
You really don't have to change your syllabus at all. All you need to do is just enable Hypothesis with the readings you're already using. So it is very, very easy to get started uh, with Hypothesis at any, at any point in time uh, within the semester. So um, definitely you know, email us and, and we can have a discussion on, on what that looks like. And lastly, if you have any other questions, um, we are, are coming up here. We've got about four minutes left. Um, please email uh, success at hypothesis. So that's if, if you do have any, um, you know, pedagogical questions or any, any thoughts about anything that I mentioned today or want to um, get any further information, please email us there. I'm going to come in. I, I wasn't able to see the Q&A when I just, when I first started and I still can't um, within my Zoom. Zoom. So anyone that has put a Q&A in, if it hasn't been answered, um, we will look at those and I will get back to you. Uh, apologies that I, I can't see that. And I think within chat, we've got um, lots of different um, uh lots of different um, links and 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 things in there for for you to be able to use um, but we will um, definitely get back to anyone in that q a that that uh, we didn't get able we weren't able to get to so apologies for that but um I want to thank everyone for joining us today um it's been a wonderful time to spend some you know just an hour with you all so uh, please reach out if you have any other questions and uh, thank you so much happy Wednesday have a great rest of the week